Hi, I'm Ms O'Connor and I'm a primary school teacher and today my friend John from the Heritage in School Scheme is going to show you how to look up stories collected by school children more than 80 years ago. They asked older people about games they played, things they ate and things that happened long ago. But first, Fikra is going to read you a story, one of those stories called Ghostly Noises. Ghostly Noises From Mr. Edmund Ballygarren Kilmockridge, aged 50 years, the old schoolhouse situated down near the church at Litter is supposed to be troubled by weird noises heard at night. Lights too have been seen at most unearthly hours. She also states that there is a ghostly tale about the parochial house and litter beside the church. An old priest is supposed to walk at night. When a canon O'Connor lived in this house three years ago, it is reported that a tall priest used to pay night visitations to the house. Hi, I'm John. I hope you enjoyed Fakra reading the ghostly noises story. There's a lot more stories where that came from and today I'm going to show you the Dukas.ie website that has lots of stories from the Irish Folklore Commission project and they look the way you can see on screen now. First, we're going to look at how to get on to the Dukas.ie website and explore and learn from the stories that are on the pages. Then, I'm going to look at some of the stories just to give you an idea of what's on it. And then lastly, I'm going to look at some of the act activities that you might do having had a look at the different stories that are on the Irish Folklore Commission's web pages. So now we're just going to look at how you get on to the website. Now, when you open up the internet, you'll just go in and you'll type www.ducchas dot ie in just like this you'll see me doing the exact same on screen and once you log in then the duchess.ie website will come up there you can see it coming up on the screen now now one of the things that you'll notice is in the top right hand of the screen we're looking at it in english but talag and gaelica on freshen mass me in that but for today, we're going to look at it in English, but you can click between English and Irish, just as you saw on the clip. Now, I'm just going to move around the wedge page a little, just so you can see what's on it. You can see the link to the school's collection here as well. And you can click that view button if you wish. But if you get lost at all, go back to the top of the page, click collection, and click the school's collection. Now if you're using a tablet or a mobile device or computer the web page will look slightly different on each of them but the main thing is is that it still has all the same information it just is laid out or appears slightly differently and it might be in slightly different places. So if you have a mobile device it'll probably look something like this If you move around the page, you'll notice though that it is pretty much the same and exactly the same information you'll get on a mobile device, a tablet or a laptop computer. You can see the school's collection link there, the view button. Obviously you will be using your fingers to move the screen around so it reacts a little differently than it does on a computer, but I largely be doing this using a computer just for today. You can change between Lag and Gaelica and English as well on the mobile version you can see with G-A-E-N but your main menu button you can see with the green circle around it on the screen there now. Just to show you around the screen once more, just you can see the various things on the page. If you see any of them, like I said previously, 
just go back to the top of the page so that you can find where you are. Now, since we're going to look for the Scoods collection, we'll be looking for the link on the menu. And you can see the cursor moving around at the top of the screen, the little arrow. You can see it goes to Collections here now, and it goes down to the Schools collection. And this is what the page will look like if you're looking on a computer or a laptop. If you want to find that link that where the green circle is on the top of the screen, on a, uh, if your screen looks like that on a mobile device. So this is what happens when you click the link on a computer. You can see the Schools collection page, and it brings you up this information where you will be able to see, if you look around the screen, that uh, there is a search bar there at the top. You still can change between English and Irish. You scroll down, you'll see a list of schools where the stories were recorded, and you can go and click on any of these. And there are be multiple pages of these for every county. So you may have to move between the pages to find them. And as you can see on the left of the screen now, you can click the counties. So you can go and select a county. Now, I'm going to go and I'm going to pick a particular school because it's the school that, that fake we read the story from. And it's in Kilmockridge in County Wexford. So we've clicked Wexford under the counties. And we're going to go down and find it on the page. Now, there are three pages of schools in Wexford. And so to move to another page, since the Kilmockridge one is not on the first page, you can see the little arrows and you just click the arrow and it'll bring us to the next page and we'll find the Kilmockridge school. So you can see the list of schools here. These are the schools for County Wexford on the first page. And we're going to go to the second page. And there you can see Kilmockridge halfway down. And so this brings us to, this is what is on the website for each school that submitted information in the school's folklore collection. You can read through this, the handwritten version, exactly as it was recorded, just using the pages to read it like a little book. But then you can go down. A lot of them have been uh, converted to text to make them easier to read. And you can see what the subjects of those stories are by sliding down through the menu. You can see like I'm doing here on a computer screen. So you can see here the story that Faker was reading. And if you look closely in the video, you can actually see that he has the page open that he's reading the story from. So we can go down and we can pick another story from the stories collected by the school children in Kilmockridge in the 1930s. Here's one about severe weather. I'm sure you all remember the big snow that fell last year. Well, there's a story here about snow that fell in 1808. It's quite a long time ago, but it's about how, how difficult it was to get around um, what they had to do for food at the time. And it's the kind of little story that was collected by school children in the 1930s and recorded along with other types of stories um, about games and other activities. So this is a game called hiding the button. The rules of the game are quite simple. You get a button, you hide the button. Other people then have to try and find the button and you just tell them whether they're hot or they are cold. Now there are lots of games like this on the school's folklore collection, but older people that you may know might remember games like this that they played when they were younger. And it's always worth asking them if, if they remember the games, how they played the games and what the rules were. And you can always write them down and learn them and maybe even teach them to younger children or play them in your house. This is another game called Fox and Goose, and you draw lines of dots so that you have a grid of dots, and you play the game by people taking turns to draw a line between dots, and they have to make a square. 
and you write your name in the square and the person with their name in the most squares at the end wins. But if you look for fox and goose on the school's folklore collection, you can read the rules in more detail and maybe even try and play the game to see if it's uh, fun. Many of these games are really simple to play because you might just need, like in Fox and Goose, a page of paper and a pencil to play the game. So they are all quite easy to play when you do um, read about them. Just as there weren't tablets and computers and digital games in the 1930s and before that, people cooked differently then in a lot of ways. There's a lot of things they made differently. There were no microwaves. They had maybe different types of ingredients. And you can find people talking about things that they ate, even some recipes for food that they made in the school's folklore collection. Now, I've just picked one here for fudge, and some people may eat potato bread or they meet things that are very like this and not even know that that's what they were called in the past. Fortunately, where they do give a recipe or describe how something's cooked, it's often very simple and straightforward. And so it's worth talking to older people to see what they remembered about the foods being made and who made them and what they tasted like. And it might even be possible if you get a grown up to help that you actually might be able to make some of them today and see what you think of them and see how you think they taste. Okay, now we're going to look at some things that you might be able to do once you've looked at the school's folklore collection. Now, if you're going, if you want to go and explore the, the folklore collection, you can go backwards through this video to check to make sure that you're doing things right to get on to the different pages and you can go backwards and forwards as you please. And it's just the same for the rest of the video. Um, anywhere that you want to stop, just stop and then you can come back and press play again. So when we talk about different activities that you might want to do, you can just stop and then come back and uh, restart the video um, wherever you want. Okay, now we're gonna look at some worksheets and activities that you might do. The worksheets are designed that they're easy to draw on the page if you can't get them printed out. So don't be too worried about getting them printed out. Now there are four worksheets. The first of the worksheets will be looking at um, the new words that you might find that you when you look up the school's folklore collection. You're going to come across some words that you don't know, maybe you don't understand. And so instead of getting stuck, just write the word down and keep a record, maybe write the sentence that the word is in and un underline the word just so that you know what way it was used. And then maybe you can go and you can talk to someone, an older person or a grown up, you can look it up in a dictionary. There's lots of different ways that you can go about find out what the word means. Now, where you find a game described in the school's folklore collection, you can always record the name of the game on a page and write out the rules of the game. And if there's a drawing of the game, maybe, or there's something that would help to draw to show how the game's played, to record all that information. You might also want to talk to an older person to see what games they played when they were young or if there was games that they remembered even other people telling them about from a long time ago and try and write the same information down and then learn how to play the game. Because you never know, you might enjoy them quite a lot. They might be unusual games or the sort of games that you don't really get to play very much today. Of course, when it comes to the stories about food, everyone might get interested in trying out something that they read about here. Um, you can again, you can write down on a page all the information that you would need if you wanted to try it out. Um, you write down the name of what it is, um, you write down what you might need to make it, and then you write down what it says about how you would go about making it. And then when you've done all that, if you do get a chance to make it, and of course you need to ask permission of a grown up 
before you even think of trying to do it. But once you've done all that, you can write down what it tastes like. One big project you can do after reading things from the school's folklore collection is you can decide on your own questions you'd like to ask an older person. And what to do is sit down, write down the questions and work out all the different things you'd like to ask about like games or food or things they remember that happened in the past. And then you can do what the school children did in the 1930s and you can talk to the older people and write down the different stories and the different things that they tell you about. I hope you have some fun now looking at the school's folklore collection and talking to older people about what life was like in the past. Thanks for listening. I hope you all enjoyed that. Now, you can go read more stories and maybe call some older people to collect some stories of your own. You'll find activity sheets to help you do that on this page. Bye.